Hey there, Louis Acabellis here. Thanks for stopping by. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can create reports in ServiceNow. Now, before we get started, if you find this tutorial helpful, please hit that thumbs up below and be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on the latest ServiceNow tutorials that I publish. Now let's go ahead and let's get started. All right, now in this tutorial, we are gonna be creating two different types of reports. The first one that we're going to build is going to be a list report type. And through that report, we're going to be looking at how to add some filters, sorting, grouping by, etc. And the second report that we're going to build is going to be a time series chart. So a column chart that is going to outline the volume of incidents that were opened by month. Now, the first thing that you want to do when you're in service now is you want to click into your filter navigator and type reports. This is going to bring up the reports submenu, and from here you want to go ahead and click on create new. All right, now very quickly, the create a report menu is where you will come to configure your reports. Just in terms of the user interface, on the left hand side, you have some different setting menus where you'll actually configure your report settings. On the right hand side, this is where you're going to preview your report. And what you'll also notice is that ServiceNow has implemented some artificial intelligence. And essentially what this is, is this will allow you to insert a parameter and it's going to suggest for you some data that might be relevant. So if I type in the word incidents, you can see here, it's going to suggest that I look at these different data elements, including tables and specific columns. Now, the first thing that we need to do is we need to give our report a name. For this report, I'm going to call this active incidents. Next, you need to select a source type. Now, if you click into this field, you'll see there's only two options, table and a data source. For this report, we are just going to be building it from a table. And then in the table field, you want to start typing and search for the table that stores the data that you're trying to retrieve and consume as part of your report. For this report that I'm building, Again, we're gonna be looking at a list of incidents, so I'm gonna be querying against the incident table. Then you wanna click on the next button. This is going to bring you into the type menu, and essentially this is where you can select the different report types that you want to create. So you can see here that there's report visualizations, including bar charts, pies and donut charts, time series, uh, multi-dimensional reports. And if you scroll all the way to the bottom, you can see here there's uh, calendars, uh, there's pyramids, and the default selection is a list. And you can see on the right that my list has populated. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click next. In the configure menu, this is where you can come to actually choose which columns should be included in your report, specifically in this list. And if I click on choose columns, you can see here, I have a list of available columns and I have the selected columns. Now, very quickly, I do not want to include updated and updated by, so I'm just gonna hold shift and click on both of those and move them back into the available menu by pressing this arrow. And so you're gonna see that I've removed those. I'm going to also go ahead and remove the assigned to field. Now, what I want to include in my list is the created date. So I'm going to look for that field and you can see here created and I am just going to go ahead and move that into my selected menu. Now, if you want to rearrange the column orders, again, you can just select the specific column that you want to move and use the up or down arrows to actually move that column into the appropriate position. And here I want to move created into the third position in this list. Next, you want to click OK. And at any point while you're configuring or building your report, if you want to actually preview that report, all you need to do is click on the Run button. So you can see here, I'm going to click on Run. And the updated and updated by columns were removed, and the created column was added, and it's now placed in the third position. Now, the other thing that you can do in the configure your report menu is you can add your grouping, which we're going to do, but we're actually gonna come back and do this as the last step. So you can use this menu to set your group by, and you can even create function fields, which are fields with calculations from this menu. 
Um, very quickly, if you wanted to add some additional style elements to your report, you can click on the style link here. And this is going to allow you to configure your chart titles, uh, the font, the color, axes, alignment, etc. cetera. Um, I'm just gonna skip this section for now and we're gonna now move right into filtering and adding conditions to our report. All right, now to apply filters to a report in ServiceNow, what you need to do is you need to actually click on this little filter icon and you can see when I hover over it, it says open condition builder. The condition builder is where you can add your conditions, your filters, you can sort, uh, you can even specify related list conditions. Now the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to add a filter to our report to only show those that are active. Now to apply a filter, what you want to do is you want to select the field that you want to filter on. Now the way I'm going to build this filter is I'm going to use the state or status field of these records. So you can see here I selected state. Next you want to select your operator and when you actually click into this field, you can see you have a bunch of different options. So if I wanted to build a filter that said, you know, show me all of the records where state is new or active, I would select is. So you can use whichever operator here is applicable to you. Now, what we're going to do is I'm going to use this operator that says is not one of. Next, you'll want to select the actual specific criteria. Now you'll notice once I selected my operator, the last field here updated to show me all of the different status values. Now my definition of active is going to be any record whose status is not canceled, closed, resolved, or on hold. Okay, now that leaves in progress and new. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this as my definition of active. And again, if you wanted to select multiple values from a choice field, you just wanna hold control and click on those records. Next, I'm going to add another condition and you'll see here you have the option to use either an or statement or an end statement and you can click on either and it's just going to add another row to your condition builder here. Now you'll see that I clicked or and what that did is it just automatically carried over the initial filter. So where state is not one of and it just starts you off with that sort of parameter. Now I'm gonna go ahead and remove this condition by just clicking on this minus sign and I'm going to use an end condition. And this time what I am going to do is I also want to only include those incident records that were created within the last year. So in my choose a field field, I'm going to use the created field. And again, you want to select your operator and now you'll notice that the operators are sort of context-based. So because I'm working with a date field, you can see here that the operators correspond to dates. So I can say, show me all the records when the created date was on, not on, before, at or before, et cetera. Now I'm going to filter to show me only those records that were created within the last year. And so I'm going to use at or after. This is the equivalent to on or after. Now the last thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go ahead and select my date criteria. Now you'll notice that ServiceNow also gives you these nice little pre-configured definitions. So if you click on any of these drop downs here, you can see uh, today, yesterday, tomorrow, last seven days. If I click into the weeks, you know, this week, last week, next week, et cetera. So it, ServiceNow automatically gives you some of these parameters pre-built to make life a little bit easier. Now, what I'm going to say is I'm going to go ahead and ask ServiceNow to show me only those records that are active that were created at or after the last year. Now at any point when you're building in your conditions, if you want to update the report, all you need to do is come up to the top of your screen and click run. And that's automatically going to apply your filter. And what's really cool is you can also see next to the filter icon, the actual conditions that are being applied. So you can see here uh, where the state is not one of on hold, resolved, closed, canceled and where created is on or after or greater than or equal to uh, January 1st, 2020.
Now I'll show you how to sort. So you can see here, if you just skim down this list, these records are sorted by default uh, from the latest possible created date to the earliest. If I wanted to change that sort, I could just click on add a sort. And how to use this is you want to go ahead and select the field on which you want to sort. And so I'm going to go ahead and select created. And then you want to go ahead and select your sort criteria. So if I select A to Z and click save and then run my report again, you can see here that the sort is now sorting from earliest to latest as opposed to latest to earliest, which was the default sort condition. Now I'll show you one last thing with lists and that is how to group them. So I mentioned that you can actually group records in your list reports in the configure menu. Now I'm going to go ahead and in my group by field, I'm going to group this report by state. So I'm just going to search for that field and select state. And now when I click run, what you can see here is the results of this list have been grouped into their corresponding status. And I can just expand that state field to drill into the specific records that are in that state. So that's how to create a list type report in ServiceNow and how to add conditions using the condition builder, sorting using the condition builder, and grouping by from the configure menu. Next, what we're going to look at is we're going to look at how to create a time series chart that trends out the number of incident records created on a monthly basis. All right, now I've gone ahead and I've created my second report here and I've just called this report incidents created by month. Now again, I'm gonna go ahead and select the incident table as the basis for this report. I'm gonna go ahead and click on the next button now this time in the report type, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down to time series and I'm gonna select the column. And so this again is when you want to actually trend some data over time. Now I'm gonna go ahead and click next. And as I click next, you can actually see that this report has updated to show me a column chart, okay? That's again, trending out some data over time. Now, what you want to do in the configure menu is you want to actually specify the parameters in which you want to trend this data. So the first option here is the trend by field. And you can see that this says select the field to divide it into time segments on the X axis or the horizontal axis. Now, when I actually click on this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and click created. So again, we're going to be looking at the number of incidents created by month, okay? Uh, you also have the option to change the calendar format. So I'm just gonna leave this as standard calendar. And then you want to go ahead and select the actual unit of time that you want to trend by. And you can see here, it's set to year by default. You could make it quarter, month, week, day, etc. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and select month. And in the aggregation field, here's where you actually want to aggregate your records by. So because I'm looking for the number of incidents created, I'm going to be aggregating by a count. Now I'm gonna go ahead and click run. Now you can see here that the chart has updated. It's now showing the month and corresponding year along the horizontal axis. And if you hover over the actual bars, you can see the actual count of records that were created. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna apply a filter to this. So I'm gonna open our condition builder. And this time what I'm going to do is I am going to add a time filter. So I'm gonna be using created and I am going to say where the created date was at or after and I'm going to select the last year. Now I'm gonna go ahead and run this again. And so you can see here that I am now showing the number of incidents that were created by month within the last year, okay? So June 2020, October 2020, December 2020, and then January 2021. Now you can apply other filters again using the condition builder. 
Um, and if you wanted to actually apply some labels to this, you can click on the style link at the top of the report menu, and you can actually come in here and apply some titles. So I'm gonna go ahead and add my uh, title to always show. I'm going to go ahead and increase the size of the actual title. And when I run it again, you can see here that that font has increased. So that's it. In this tutorial, I showed you how to create reports in ServiceNow. And specifically, we looked at how to create a list type report. And then we looked at how to create a time series report that is trending out some data over time. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you did, please hit that thumbs up below and be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on the latest ServiceNow tutorials that I publish. I'm Louis Acabellas. Thanks for stopping by. Talk soon.